On July 18, 2020, Maria Luisa Sedino checked into the Lamb Mission Hotel in Manuel Antonio. Maria was found dead in her room. The investigation uncovered multiple suspects, including hotel employees and guests, with bite marks on the victim's body, text messages, and other evidence leading to their arrests. Eventually, one suspect, Herrera, was convicted and sentenced to 50 years, while others were found not guilty due to insufficient physical evidence and a malfunctioning hotel security system, leaving lingering questions about the case. Hi, and welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, please consider subscribing as it helps us motivate to create more intriguing content for you. Before we move forward, as a token of our appreciation for your support, we're giving away free ebooks. Check out the video description below for a treasure of knowledge waiting just for you. Now, back to the video. Let's have a look at the case of Maria Luisa Cedino. Manuel Antonio is in the province of Punta Arenas in Costa Rica. Maria brought her small dog named Mofolda with her to a hotel. She treated her as her daughter and took her everywhere. Nothing out of the ordinary happened on the first day. This is what most tourists do. Maria Luisa went to the beach, ate lunch at a restaurant, and drank some alcohol. Things changed the next day. Someone brought Maria Luisa a bottle of wine, mineral water, and two cups to her room at exactly 4.30 p.m. It is important to note that she did not tell anyone she was going with someone, and everyone around her was sure she needed to rest by herself. During the afternoon and evening, her room did not make any noise. The next day, the hotel staff tried to get in touch with her, but did not hear back. Someone on staff had already talked to Maria Luisa, and she told them that she was living alone because she and her partner had just broken up. She also said she was not feeling well, and that she was only going with her little dog. Even though it had been months since the pandemic began, the woman said it was still affecting her mental health, which was getting worse because of everything she had been through. She needed a break. So, the hotel staff went into the room to make sure everything was okay. Because the front door was locked from the inside, they tried the door that led to the patio to see if that worked. Pet owners had the option to use the escape exit in this room, allowing their dogs to go outside to relieve themselves. They noticed that the exit was partially open as they approached it. As soon as they walked in, they could smell something awful and saw blood spots all over the room. The dog was still alive, but he was sleeping in a corner shaking with fear and staying away from the hotel staff. On the bed, a sheet-wrapped body seemed to be moving all the time because it was either traumatized or very scared. They found Maria Lou's dead body in this way. A very well-known and recognized expert in her field, she was an anesthesiologist. She was 43 years old when she died. At CESIMA Hospital in Escasu, she was in charge of the Department of Anesthesiology and Rehabilitation. Her colleagues held a genuine fondness for her, and in the initial stages of the pandemic, she displayed remarkable dedication to her work, driven by a strong desire to assist patients during those challenging times. Since the woman worked in medicine, she was able to help her family a lot with this. She helped people get health insurance and go to their meetings. In a way, she was the family's right hand. She was always there for them when she could help with anything. She could not always be with her family because her parents lived in Fortunate to San Carlos. Maria's friends said she was a tough, smart, and likable woman who loved to travel. People really did not say anything bad about her. Finding out about her brutal death was very upsetting in Costa Rica and with her own family. Why would someone want to kill Maria Luisa? The staff found the dead body right away, and the mysteries of the case started right there. Maria Luisa was scared when she saw the crime scene, both because of the violence she saw and because of the mystery that started when they went into the hotel room she had rented. Now let us talk about the facts that were found in this case. First, let us talk about getting in. Every hotel in the world keeps track of the magnetic keys that are used to get into rooms. They know the code for the key and the card that was used to enter the room every time someone does. This way, they could tell if it was a guest or a hotel worker. In this case, the death of Maria, there was no record of having keys that did not belong to the woman. It turned out that she was the only one who had been in her room the night before. It was clear that someone could have gotten in through the sliding glass door in the back. As a guest, the only person who could open and lock this door was the person who lived there. But since the door was a sliding one and not magnetic, 
There was no record of anyone coming in through the backyard. Someone could have come in through that door and killed Maria Luisa if she left it open or let someone in. At the time, it made the most sense to explain what happened. When the hotel staff found the body, they called the police. When the police arrived, they did not have to do a full investigation to know that Maria had been killed. There were a lot of wounds on her body, and it was clear that someone had abused her and was very angry about it. Forensic experts went to the spot to collect evidence, figure out how the person died, and look at every detail in the hopes of catching the person who did. As a matter of fact, the violence was so bad that the police suggested that the Cedeno family have a public burial. After some time, an autopsy showed that the person had been beaten several times and that two of the fingernails were broken. In other words, Maria was defending herself. Part of the exam that showed that the killer had washed the body was another revelation. After the murder, he led Maria to the bathroom. The police officer said the woman was killed in her bedroom on the bed. The man took the body to the bathroom, washed it, dried it, wrapped it in a cloth, and put it on the bed. It was in this way that the hotel staff later found Maria's body. The body was drenched in blood, making it extremely challenging to discern whether the killer had attempted to eliminate evidence and cover up the crime. Blood was on the bed, the floor, the walls, and the curtains. This made it even clearer that the attack was very cruel. The experts took pictures and gathered as much solid proof as they could. After putting the body through an autopsy, the police started talking to hotel workers and guests who might have heard something. From what people saw at the scene, Maria must have been yelling and her dog must have been barking. However, no one said they heard screaming all night. A few people were working at the hotel, even though it was almost empty because of the pandemic. The owner, Harry who lived there with his husband Dano, was always there. Because they were having money problems, he let some caretakers live in the hotel. This was also because the hotel was never full during the pandemic, so letting friends use a room did not cost him anything. In Maria's room, authorities found two glasses and the bottle of wine she had ordered through room service. Later, the victim's cell phone showed that she had sent a friend a picture of the two glasses. The message did not say that she was with anyone or that she was waiting for someone in her room. Additionally, she conveyed to her friend via an audio message that she was thoroughly enjoying her stay at the hotel minor. She mentioned that Mafelda, her dog, was treated exceptionally well, and she had opted for the all-inclusive package for an extra 100 units of currency. This package included various amenities like drinks, fruits, and treats for Mafelda. She expressed her enthusiasm about the experience, even mentioning dancing with the bartender, another gentleman, and the owner's assistant. Notably, the owner was Dutch, which added to the uniqueness of the place. She shared that the cost per night was 155,000 colons, and with the all-inclusive package, she could order dinner from any restaurant. While acknowledging that the hotel was somewhat shabby and understaffed, she emphasized her genuine liking for the place, considering it a very cool destination. Later, when police talked to Maria's family and friends to find out if she had any clear enemies, they found out that she always ordered two glasses, even when she was by herself. So one glass could hold booze and the other could hold water. This proves that the woman was by herself and not waiting for anyone. Now we come back to the first idea. The person who attacked Maria must have seen her in the hotel, seen that the back door was open and attacked her. On the other hand, a lot of the violence seemed to come from someone who really hated her and was very angry with her, which was hard to explain. People who knew the woman and wanted to hurt her really seemed to be the only ones who could have killed her in this case. But at the same time, there was no proof that Maria Luisa was seen or being with someone. The autopsy also showed that the woman had been abused in another way. She also had marks on her cheeks, lips, arms, and stomach from being hit and strangled. After looking at the autopsy results and talking to family, friends, and people at the hotel, the police decided that the attack could not have been done by a single person since Maria's screams could not be heard. Then they thought there might have been at least two attacks and that they had held her down so well that they had full control over her. People even thought there might have been a third person because the woman had been attacked. This idea says that two of the attackers held Maria Luisa down while a third raped her. 
The fact that there were no signs of ropes or anything else on the body that would suggest the victim was tied gives this story more weight. The police also thought that the men may have put something in the woman's mouth so she would not be able to scream or so no one would be able to hear her screams. This way they could attack her without anyone hearing anything. The person died from a head accident, which could have happened in a number of ways. It could have been caused by a hard blow to the head, being hit by something or falling heavily to the floor. In the end, what the attackers did to Maria Luisa while she was sitting down was horrible, pointless, and hard to understand. As soon as the body of the hotel guest showed a lot of fresh wounds that looked like they were caused by someone trying to protect themselves, the first suspects were quickly found. According to the tests, it was Torreira Martinez, an exotic dancer who worked in bars in the city and was at the hotel when the murder happened. While investigators tried to connect the man to the case, he was locked up. His tracks were compared to footprints found at the murder scene. Two of them were the same as the man's footprints, which were found on the black porcelain floor in front of the bed in the bedroom. A hotel security guard saw Luis Carlos Miranda walking the hallways at night with the first suspect and quickly caught him. Since Torreira had been caught, Luz Carlos had to be questioned to see if he had anything to do with the case. There were also tests, and it turned out that the bite marks on Maria's body matched his teeth records. Employees of the hotel said they saw Maria talking to Luz Carlos and Herrera. They just said hello and asked each other how things were going. A small hotel with only a few people may have caused this. They may have seen each other more than once. Recently, we talked about how the hotel owner let two friends stay with him because they were having money problems and there was a play going on. The most consistent thing the cops did when they saw that the footprints and bite marks of these two suspects matched was to question Harry Barton, who owned this hotel. During questioning, he said that Harry and his husband were having dinner with the two suspects in their hotel room on the night of July 19, 2020, which is when the murder happened. The four guys went to a private pool after dinner. Then Harry told everyone that the two suspects worked for him because he let them live there. Luis Carlos was in charge of selling the website and Herrera worked as a cook and bartender. Although the suspects and the hotel owners were not close friends before they moved in, they started to see each other more often after a year. They went out to dinner and lunch together and spent time together. So the four men became friends with each other. This conversation with Harry Barton in August 2020 was helpful because two bite marks on the victim's body matched his dental records. That is when the truth started to come out. The cops took all of the detainees' phones and found very revealing text messages between Luz Carlos and Harry. Luz asked the hotel owner to sleep with a woman in these messages, even though he was meant to be watching. The communication took place a few days before the event. While the police built their case, the suspects said the messages did not mean anything and were just a joke. However, that was enough for the police to keep them in jail with physical proof. There was no proof against anyone but the husband of the hotel owner. There were no text messages, fingerprints, or bite marks that matched those on the victim. The suspects' lawyers tried to say that the bite marks on the body were not strong enough proof to prove that any of them were involved in the murder. There was still evidence that the three guys killed Maria Lewis, the lawyer for hotel owner Harry asked that his client be freed and put under house arrest before the trial started. There were two reasons for this. Of course, Harry was 69 years old, there was a plague going on in the country, and being in jail was dangerous. The second reason is that he supposedly had trouble walking after having knee surgery not long ago. The man's defense team said he had been going with a cane for a long time. When the trial started, he showed up in a wheelchair. This request got him put under house arrest, but he was still able to go back to the hotel where he was living. While he waited for his trial, he could not leave the hotel but had everything he needed. He had restaurants, a swimming pool, and maids. The charges against the prisoners were heard in public at their trial, which began on September 13, 2022. At that point, it was hard for the prosecutors to show that Harry Barton and Luz Carlos were involved. Remember that they were caught with text messages and what looked like bite marks on the victim's body. The problem was that the bites could not show who killed the person. They could only rule out possible suspects. One thing that was not true was that the bite did not exactly match the dental records. This meant that the two people in question were not employee of the hotel. That is why it was not enough proof. 
On the other hand, Herrera thought he had the strongest proof against him. There was a trail of blood. There were also cuts and scrapes on his body that Maria had made when she tried to protect herself. People found his blood under the victim's fingernails. His shoes, watch, and cell phone, which were in his room at the time of the search, also had blood on them. Obviously, this meant that they could only convict Herrera, who got 50 years in prison. Harry and Carlos were found not guilty because there was not enough physical proof. The hotel security cams stopped working for some reason on the day of the murder, which makes a lot of people think that these two men were also involved. There is a good chance that someone set this up. Some people thought that the other person was a hotel security guard. There was not enough proof to arrest him or the other two people, though. He left for another country after the murder, even though the police asked him to be a witness at the hearing. There are many more things about this case that lead to the conclusion that more than one person is involved. Two hotel guests even told the cops that the power went out for a long time the night of the murder, which may have been done on purpose. First, so the cams would not work, and then so the magnetic keys would not turn on. Another strange thing is that the police searched the hotel owner's private office nine days after the murder. This could have given him time to get rid of all the proof. The suspect's social media accounts were also looked at, and conversations about some kind of fantasy were found. These conversations had a clear link to how Maria's body was found. The only person who is in jail for this murder is Herrera, who is also looking for a new trial to see if he can get his sentence reduced. Even though the case is over, the family still thinks there is something else going on like a defense or a cover-up. They said that the police gave them Maria's bloody belongings and they do not know why this happened because they wanted to keep this proof in case something else was found. They are clearly happy with Herrera's decision, but not with Harry and Carlos Miranda's acquittal.